Welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Hello, subscribers. What? You're not a subscriber yet? Well, just click on that button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and you'll instantly become an Online Jewelry Academy subscriber. Our subscribers get weekly notifications of new OJA video releases. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say thank you to our patrons. Those are the people who have supported the production of this video and future videos through their patronage using patreon.com. Don't forget that the Online Jewelry Academy regularly posts fun things to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, this is an intermediate project video, which means that I'm going to move at a little bit faster pace than normal. And if you've been a loyal Online Jewelry Academy viewer, don't worry about it. You'll be familiar with all of the tools, concepts, and vocabulary that I'm going to use in this video. But if there are some gaps in your knowledge, don't worry about it because we've conveniently posted a playlist of relevant videos from the Online Jewelry Academy playlist, the big one, that will help you to know exactly what you need to fill in the gaps in your knowledge. Okay, now what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to make this, what I'm calling the moonshine bracelet. Now, not because it, I made it when I was drunk, but because it looks like a lunar surface. Um, maybe not our moon, but one in my dreams. <laughs> and anyway, this is a great intermediate project because it will really help you to develop the skill set that you need to really advance towards making fine jewelry. Now, some of the hallmarks of fine jewelry are a very uniform repetition of elements and a solid construction but not so solid that the elements don't have beautiful articulation that help them to drape over a part of the body, in this case, your wrist. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that this piece is finished on the front and the back. And a really cool feature about it is that there's a little clasp on the end of the bracelet that if I click the last link through it, it's disguised when you're wearing it. Okay, so let's talk about what goes into making this beautiful bracelet. Well, the first thing is the texture on each of these individual discs. How did I achieve that? Well, I used this tool that I made and I used it along with 22 gauge sterling silver sheet metal that was fully annealed in order to create a really beautiful positive texture. Now, if you don't have access to a rolling mill, don't worry about it. There are plenty of videos in our playlist that will show you how to make some beautiful and dramatic textures that you could apply to the surface of your bracelet. Okay, so this is a piece of the 22 gauge sterling silver that I was talking about that has the surface already printed onto it. So the way that I achieve the uniformity of the individual discs is I use this tool. This is a disc cutter. So what I need to do is I just need to, well, first of all, before I work with any tool, I need to apply my eye protection. Don't forget to be careful in the studio. All right, so I'm going to give it a little tap so I can open it up. And now what I want to do is I want to insert this piece of metal into the hole and I have a cutter that corresponds perfectly. And there's our perfect little disc with its lunar surface already on it. Now, if you have any problems with your cutting disc, you can always correct the edge a little bit with a file. The next thing that I need to do is I need to give it that sort of concave shape. And I've got my wooden dapping block here. So I'm just gonna put it into one of the depressions in the tool. And I'm gonna pick up one of the little striking pieces here and I want to just center it and give it a couple of wraps. The main thing that you want to do is make sure that the piece of metal takes on the exact shape of this concavity of the tool so that you know that it's uniform. If you see any kind of fluting or rippling of the metal, just give it a few more wraps and it should smooth out perfectly. All right, so I'm going to set that over here on my charcoal block so that I can solder it. 
And what am I going to solder to it? Well, let's look at the back of the bracelet again. And you can see that I have little pieces of sheet metal on the back side of a, each individual disc. And what these do is they anchor the jump rings. So what I did is I measured more of the 22 gauge sterling silver sheet metal and I cut it to a width of about four millimeters. And each one of these is approximately 14 millimeters in length. Now they're all standing approximately two millimeters high. Now, how did I get that kind of consistency with the height? Well, I'll show you. What I did is I used my vernier calipers and on one side of my flat nose pliers, you can see that I used a permanent marker in order to mark exactly two millimeters in depth. So what that allows me to do is to pick up a piece of sheet metal and then I can just insert it and look and see, and I go two millimeters into it. And then I just give it a right angle bend just like that. And then I just go to the other side and repeat the same process. Two millimeters down, give it a bend and voila, there it is, a matching unit. Now, when you're making a piece like this, it's important to make all of the components individually and have them all ready so that you can perform your soldering operation in one sitting. Now, obviously I've already made a majority of the bracelet, so now I'm gonna show you how to make one more link. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply flux to the back side of this dome. Now remember, flux is a great way to control oxides and it's also a great wetting agent which allows the solder to easily flow into the seams that you're trying to join. All right, so I've got my flux on the back. If you get a little bit of charcoal on there, not a problem. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my little link and I want to place it in the center of my disc. And <clears throat> you can just eyeball this, it's not that hard. You can just see the center of the disc and move it into position. Then what I wanna do is I wanna place pallions of solder next to these edges so that I can get them to flow and fill and seal those seams up so that it becomes one unit. Now, if you want to, you can actually put the solder inside of the piece and then put the heat around it to draw the solder underneath and through. All right, I'm gonna light my torch and I have my solder pick in my other hand just in case. First, I'm just gonna tickle it a little bit with the flame just to dry things out. Oops, that one moved out of the way a little bit. There we go, not a problem. The solder is basically led by the heat to where you want it, so this one's fine. All right, so quench my tool so I don't burn anything, and then I wanna quench the work. I always love that sound. Okay, so sometimes I like the little bit of blush that you get from something like that after you've soldered it. It's kind of pretty. All right, so I wanna connect it to my bracelet. And here we're working with jump rings, so it's really easy. Just remember, jump rings never give you a hug. They always dance like a ballerina. So I can find the seam of the last jump ring. I'm going to hold each side of the jump ring open and just open it up just like that. And I can slide the disc on and then just reshut that seam. Now I can go ahead and apply the last one at the same time. That way I can just move ahead quickly with my soldering operation. So I'll just set this down for a second. I'll repeat the action. I open up the jump ring like a ballerina opens her arms and then I just slide that piece on and put the two ends of this jump ring together so that they butt up and kiss one another so that we make good contact. Okay, now what I can do is I can pick solder these jump rings closed. So let's move to this one first. I'm going to pick solder both of these jump rings shut. And we have a video included in the playlist for this project. So I'll be back and show you the results.
Now remember, any time that you see the solder melting to one side of a jump ring, just apply more heat to the other side because the solder is going to go where the heat is. So let's quench our work. And there we go. We have a complete lunar moonshine bracelet. Except there's one thing left that I need to show you, and that's the clasp. Now let me turn this over again to show you, and you can see the clasp is basically a glorified hook. And all we need to do is I'm going to take my flat nose pliers again, and I'm going to pick up a slightly longer segment of sheet metal that's cut to the same size as the little linkages on the back. I'll drop it in to the two millimeter mark and give it that same right angle bend. And now what I want to do is I'm going to bend it down a little bit further. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rosary pliers or round nose pliers to give it another bend. So what I want to do is come out approximately the same length that I did before on the other bends here. Maybe I'll move in a little bit more and then I just want to bend up almost to the point where it touches and then come back. I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. There we go. And I'll just take the bend the back and I'll bend it up a little bit. That way it's easier to find that end that you can loop onto. Now at this point it has little sharp ends on it, but you're going to solder it the exact same way that you soldered these backing elements. And then you can just take a file and round the edges off in order to make it into a wearable piece of jewelry. I hope you like this project. There are plenty other projects on the Online Jewelry Academy's playlist. You can find it here on YouTube or at onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.